hello and welcome to the Spectrum Show Live. I'm Paul Jenkinson. And, this, and I'm Jeff Neal. And this is Jeff Neal. Now, doing this show live is going to be tricky. For anybody unfamiliar with it, it's been on YouTube for over 10 years. And we put out one show about once a month. So when we were doing the show, we were, had a couple of ideas. Do we try and do a straight copy of the YouTube show? Or do we just sit down and chat like we did before? Or do we do something completely different? Well, we're doing a bit of everything. So um, I suppose we better do the news. Over to you. So we have, we have some news, as uh, used to be on the Spectrum Show, until Paul ran out. Uh, we've got three upcoming games. First is Cave Rescue by Matt Langley for the Spectrum Next. It's written in Next Basic. And it's an algorithmically generated buzzwire game with pickups and fuel management and boasts over 60,000 levels. Which I thought was impressive. Looks an interesting game, Paul. It looks an interesting game. It looks a bit like Subterranean Striker, for anybody that remembers that um, on the Spectrum, written by, um, produced by Inside. And I did a, a, re a rewrite of that not so long ago. Matt also tells me he's developing a basic next a next basic framework of reusable modules that he'll be releasing as well. Next, next game, game. You, do, you do the games. You do this one. Okay, this is uh, a game by John Davis called Little Ninja. It's developed using AGDX, which is the uh, modified version of arcade games designer that lets you use 8 pixel sprites. And it's a bit like Bubble Bobble. You play a ninja who has to go around shooting other ninjas, collecting their souls, and moving on to the level, next level. And lastly, we have a game by me, also for the Spectrum Next. Nothing like plugging your own game, though. There isn't anything like plugging my own game. It's a turn-based strategy game, kind of reminiscent of Advanced Wars on the GBA, if anyone's played that. Um, for the Spectrum Next, uh, if, if there are any good musicians, chip tune musicians, I could really do with someone to do the music, because I'm not very good at that. Um, I also asked, uh, could do with someone to do the loading screen for me, but Dean Swain says he's going to do it. Do you want somebody to do the me. graphic? Do you want anybody to write the game for you? <laughs> Yes, there's any decent coders as well. I can do, I can do some hand holding. It's the feature time. So, Paul, Spectrum yes. Hardware. Not that it's scripted. Yes. <laughs> The Spectrum Show's been covering hardware basically since the beginning. You could loads of it. There's all the all the well-known stuff such as the DKtronics keyboard, the interface one, the RAM turbo interface. You covered loads of it, uh, and also the more obscure stuff such as the Logatron sprite board, the Challenge Sprint high-speed cassette player, and the Redbox home automation system. So. What's your favourite? Just because it's weird and wonderful. Uh, probably this one, the heart rate monitor. Produced by Magenta Electronics, small adverts in various magazines. And this is a device that monitors your heart rate. So you have to think about this for a while. Somebody bought a Spectrum and somebody thought, what can I do with it? Can I play games? Can I type in games? Can I do my homework if I could con my parents into buying me one? No, I know what I'll do with it. I'll plug it into my body and monitor my heart. You don't actually plug it into your body though, do you? You've ruined it, you've ruined it. We are going to have a live demonstration of this, so for this we will need a volunteer from the audience. Someone who wants to plug themselves into a spectrum and see how their heart works. Right, please somebody do it, otherwise it's going to have to be me. The, the box is a bit boring really, it's a small plastic case with one socket on the front which connects to your spectrum and if you look really closely on top you'll see two small nipples oh, 
this is going to be interesting. No one has used this device apart from myself and Jeff in over 40 years. It did work. It works really well. If you just rest your thumb. Alright, so just rest your thumb over those two nipples that way. Uh, if not, it's not working, or you've got a problem. It's not working. Why does it always work when you test it, and then you come to do it live, and it never works? It never works, I know. No, it's dead. We have an X heart rate monitor. The only one in existence, and it's dead. For anybody interested, that's what it looks like inside. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I do apologise. It's got some chips, and if you look carefully, you'll see it needs a PP3 battery to work. So if you are going to use it to monitor your heart, make sure you've got a good supply of batteries. Because this thing is useless. You can't save data, you can't print data, you can't compare data. You can see what your heart's doing, but that's about it. Screwed. It's probably the only one left in existence. <laughs> Thank you. Be professional. What about the coolest bit of hardware, but it just turned out to be useless? Is this the mythical stack light rifle? We have one here that my assistant will attempt to build. It consists of four different parts. You have an initial pistol part, like any other light gun, which is this bit. You have a wood effect butt that you plug into the bottom. If LGR were here, he'd love that. I see you're doing this ominously, Jeff. <laughs> okay, you then have an extended barrel that slots into the front, which turns it into a rifle and allegedly makes it more accurate. And you then have a telescopic sight. Is that really a telescopic sight? <laughs> no, it's a plastic tube. You may ask what sort of games were made for this wonderful device, or not. What games were made for Paul? <laughs> there were three games that came with it and they were absolutely rubbish. They were written in basic. This is the first one, which is a simple duck shoot game. The black thing coming down at the top represents night time, so you have less time to shoot the pigeon, duck, bird, or whatever it is. Very, very poor. The second one is even worse. And it's a target shooting game. You have excitement as a square floats around the screen. <laughs> and you have a cowboy shooting game. And if you watch very carefully, I do hit this guy in a minute. Yes! And that's the amount of games you get. Now, I'll get to basic, as I said, but you may be interested in one thing. Have you noticed? No screen flicker. All light guns, current light guns, uh, Flick of the screen, they use the raster beam to get the target. And if you watch and you freeze frame a normal light gun, the screen will go white or black and the target will be displayed in a square box of the opposite colour. That's how the light guns work on the raster. This one doesn't. This one works on contrast and brightness. So Sounds the, like it doesn't work at all. The <laughs> it doesn't work at all. So you have a white cowboy against a blue background and hence no screen flicker. A good device. Sadly useless. So what about the piece of hardware that was most typed? Loads of cool adverts and everything like that, but it just turned out to be rubbish. Has to be this, the micro command. Full screen, uh, full colour, full page adverts in magazines. You speak, your computer obeys. And does it? No, not at all. <laughs> no. You teach it with words like up, down, left and right. It doesn't remember those words, what it remembers is the pitch and intonation and length of those words. So instead of saying down, you could say spud or whatever, and it would still pick them up as possible words that it could use. Uh, yes, it's very boring. What about the games for it? Very boring. There aren't any. That looks like one. This is the one, this is the one where I killed the dog. They, it's a sheep herding game written by Virgin that came with it 
And despite me shouting right, 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 my dog headed left and dived straight into the river and killed itself. Poor Fido. He will be remembered for his endeavours in 8-bit gaming. It's time for a competition. There is a competition and the winner will be the first person to email that address and hopefully I can pick up the emails later on. And the winner will receive three magnificent presents. Can everyone see the address? Right, so the presents are issue 30 of the Spectrum Pure magazine. Very rare, only 30 ever printed, unless you've bought one of course. Series 1 and 2 and Series 3 and 4 Blu-ray of the Spectrum Show. And the questions... Everyone's going to read the questions are... In the intro of the show, you saw four loading devices. We'd like you to name those four loading devices in the order they appear, and in some circumstances, which machine they appear on. We'll give you the answers later on. And it's time to move on to some games, finally. 16K games, Paul. 16K games. So, one of the great things about the Spectrum Show is that you've been covering 16K games for quite a while now. Again, pretty much since you started. What's your favourite 16K game? Hold on. I don't have to ask, do I? You don't have to ask. Jetpack by Ultimate Play the Game. Come on! It's the best 16K game. It's not only that, I think it's the best Spectrum game ever. It's got smooth graphics, it's got great sound, it's got great playability, multiple ships to build, multiple aliens. So, oh yeah, that's that section done. Should we move on? Well, that was exclusive new news for the Spectrum Show Live. You thinking that's the best game ever? I think we should do a top 10 16K games. Um, have we got time? Are there enough of them? I think we've got time and yeah, there are loads. Okay, we need to put some rules in place, I'm afraid. Go on then. The rules are no arcade clones. So that rules out Phoenix by Mega Dodo, classic game. Um, any Pac Man variants, Scramble, Defender, all out, I'm afraid. Nothing from Cassette 50. There wouldn't have been anywhere. <laughs> no com uh, commercial games only. Fair enough. Fair enough. And the games before 1990. I don't know any 16 k games after 1990 anyway. Okay, so I think uh, number two is going to be from Ultimate Play the Game. I can't see any, any objections. Uh, well, you're forgetting something, aren't you? Okay. This. So, 3D Death Cheers by Micro Mega. If Jetpack is the best, then this has to be the second best. This would have been a yeah. good game even if it was a 4 year K game. And the fact that it's a 16 gear K game just means it's amazing. Nighttime mode as well, tanks to shoot. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll let you have that one. We'll, we'll go with that. Go on then. So, we still have to go on to by Ultimate Play the Game. Well, we can discuss that. Well, let's discuss what is there. Great graphics, great sound, great playability. Again. Um, well, for me, the problem with the playability is that I don't like the can swapping mechanic. You, it, I, I like it, but the problem is when you go to the side to pick up a can or drop off a can, sometimes a baddie appears and kill you, kills you, and it's never your fault when that happens. It's just unfair. Not just a bad gamer, or anything. That's great. It's a great game. It's, okay. I just think that gameplay mechanic... Well, I think there's another ultimate game with a better gameplay mechanic. Go it's on. very similar. Now, this is Cookie. And I know some people don't like it. it. It is very hard. It's probably the hardest of the ultimate 16K games. But you never feel like you're dying because it's not your fault in Cookie. It's a pretty similar mechanic to... Pst. It's yeah. a good game. I, I'll give you that where it fits in the top 10 is for debate. I'm going to throw this one in. Well, let's go 3D. 3D Tunnel from New Generation. This is a 16K title. You do get a 48K variant that has a tube train at the end of it, but it's using attributes for the tunnel effect, and the tunnel does go up, down, left and right, and there are numerous sprites and enemies to shoot, including bats, toads, and other things. Yeah, I, I agree this is a really good game. For me, one of the most impressive things about this game is the size and speed of the sprites. I mean, for 16K, that's quite a bit of memory to fit, fit into the, uh, the spectrum. And you don't have a lot to play with when you're writing a 16K game. You certainly don't have the full 16K. Quite true. And your next suggestion? 
Well, I didn't even know this game was a 16k game until I started researching it for this section of the show. Um, I used to love 3D Space Wars when I was younger. It was one of the first games I played on the Spectrum and I would play it for hours and hours. 3D, another 3D game, the fact that it fits into 16k, and as I said, I always thought this was a 48k game. It's a very good game, for th yeah, for 16k as you say, very good. I'm going to throw this one into the mix. 3D Tanks from DK Tronics, another 3D game. There's a surprise. Great, great um, gameplay, different elevations to the cannon. Each elevation hits a different part. You can knock out half the tank or the full tank. Yeah, um, those, those, those tanks are very nice to each other, are they? Are they? If you disable one, but his turret's still there and he's firing, so I'm presuming there's people alive in there. <laughs> one behind it just kills them. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's a game. <laughs> you, you're next. Go on then. Now, okay, 3D Escape probably isn't the best Spectrum game, but there's a bit of nostalgia uh, for me for this one. Uh, I got a Spectrum in 83, and my neighbor got a Spectrum, and this was one of the games he got. And I used to go around there, and we used to play this for hours and hours and hours. Um, for that time, it was a really, really good game. You, you run around the maze. Uh, is it a Pac-Man clone? Is it allowed? Yeah, well, I don't think it is because you're not connect, uh, collecting anything. You when, collect I, the when, axe. I, when I bought this, it was from the same person that did 3D Monster Maze on the ZX81. And when I saw it, I thought, that's 3D Monster Maze for the Spectrum. And then I loaded it and I got that. And I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm just saying I was a bit disappointed. <laughs> okay. It's not a survival horror game. Next. What about this? Keeping with Houston. 3D side up attack. 3D, 3D side up attack. I uh, like the effect of the city. I think that's a very clever effect, especially for 16K. It is, but is the effect because you're not moving many pixels around, so it makes it easier? There's half a screen's worth there. Okay, can you better it? Um. Well, okay, so technically everyone's looking at this and going, that is definitely scramble. Scramble clone. Scramble However, clone. I'm sure everyone will remember that when Paul did his scramble clones for the Spectrum show, he left this out. So I'm sneaking this in on a technicality. Technicality. Um, this is an absolutely superb game. Uh, topical at the time as well with the Falklands War, I think around about when it was released. Probably the best scramble clone on the Spectrum and, and it's 16k and you didn't cover it. So it needs some Spectrum show love. Yeah, dear, dear, dear. Okay, let's move on. How about this? Thruster from Software Projects. What a game! You have to drop the boulder onto the nasties, and there are different nasties. You've got to shoot the blue things. Excellent. Good playability. Ah, uh, you're right. This is an absolutely excellent game. Really like this game. I, I never played this until you covered it on the Spectrum Show. That's a, that's a confession. The, the one thing I'll say is, you can't see it now with the video you're showing, but when you start getting kind of further into the game at later levels, because you don't have very much room to manoeuvre, it does start to feel a little bit claustrophobic. That's a very, very kind of picky criticism though. It is a great game. Okay, now uh, it is with great trepidation I go on to the next game. <laughs> Terrible. That's a Frogger clone. A very bad one of that. I, yeah, but that's not the full game. Um, and I will admit, that section where you have to cross the road can be the most frustrating part of, well, it's definitely the most frustrating part of any horror game. But once you've done it, once you've collected your skis, you're rewarded with this... Reward? Superb, did you use the word reward? I did use the word reward, Paul. You're rewarded with this brilliant downhill skiing game that you can just play for ages. I, I really enjoyed it. I used to spend hours playing it, and then about 10 minutes once I finally got the skis. Terrible game. It's, Terrible. The best, it's the best of the horror games. That's, that's not saying a lot, is it? Uh, really? Yes. Really. Okay, what about this one then? Android 1 from Vortex. Brilliant choice. Brilliant choice. Lots, you've got to get from right, right to the right hand side, you've got to blast your way through the walls, you then destroy the reactor, and then you've got to get all the way back. The one flaw with this game is the control mechanism. It's rotate and move, not usual movements, and that, that sort of ruins it, but. Good game. I think you get the hang of those controls, but once you get the hang of them, it's really good. And I, this is another game I didn't play until recently when we were looking at these 16K games from the show. 
I had played Android 2 as a kid, and I lo loved Android 2, but it's really, really hard. And when it came to this, I actually preferred it. I preferred this to Android 2. Yeah, I do as well. Yeah. On to the next one, another controversial one. Oh, dear. I don't know why this is controversial. Um, Look at the size of the car. It's a massive car. It's bigger than a tree. I don't think we could have covered 16 games without covering all four of Ultimate 16 k games. This is probably probably the weakest of the four. I will admit that, but it's a great little game. It's, it's kind of reminiscent of... What's the game I always forget? Um, the, the Konami one. The uh, game you always forget. Rally X. Rally X, Rally X. thank you. Yeah, thank it's, you. It's kind of reminiscent where the car looks a bit like Rally X. Um, and I just had hours and hours of fun as a kid racing around trying to collect the cups. Only ever managed to complete it once or twice. Uh, would always have another go. Drive too slow, you get killed. Drive too fast, you get killed. <laughs> it's not good. You, you've got to drive just at the right speed. Okay, here's a different one. Apple jam. You eat apples and jam. You can kill rats with lifts. You can go into sauna and lose weight. What a game! Yes, got it. <laughs> this looks like a game and watch game. <laughs> it's marvellous. It's great fun. Go on into the sauna. <laughs> This is a, it's definitely a clone of the Game & Watch game. There, there you go. If only it was so easy. <laughs> That's not getting in the top ten. Um, I think this is an honourable mention, if anything else. A Lancelot. Um, I, think, I think I decided to include this because... You couldn't think of anything else? Because, well, no, because it's quite impressive for a 16k game. It's it, got quite a few levels and it is impressive, it's just yeah, so frustrating. It, it is very, very frustrating. But, but it's, it's also a bit, that makes it a bit of a one more go game. But you keep trying to complete the levels again and again and again and just try and try. Well, I do. Okay, how about this one then? A Volcanic Planet from Thorn AMI. This reminds me a little bit of Alien Breed. You go around the complex, you have to find the bomb across multiple levels. You find the bomb, you have to get back. You either shoot or dodge the aliens as you go. This this really reminds me of Maziacs, actually. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to create. Looking at the video, I am going to criticise it for one thing. Um, your your guys nearly moving in the same place, and he's flickering. That is just bad programming. It is. The only downside to this is it doesn't have sound. So if you're going to play it, I suggest playing it with. You probably won't be able to hear this. With alien breed music playing along, it sounds it plays a lot better. Yeah, but if you could have put the alien breed music on, I can't that good. Oh, okay. Oh, this one's mine. Um, Matthew Smith's 16K game sticks. Definitely uh, warrants at least a mention in this list. It's a super single single screen game. I really enjoyed this as a kid. Loved loved going back to it. I didn't know it was Matthew Smith until certainly after us after the Spectrum scene had ended, and uh, I, I picked it back up again. Um, it's got a really interesting game play mechanic as well. In that, the more you shoot, the shorter your laser gets. So you start with you have quite a long laser that can get bodies from a distance. As you shoot, if you shoot, so you can't just keep spamming the fire button and firing, 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 which makes it a bit tactical. Um, it was a great game play mechanic. Okay, uh, I will consider it. <laughs> How about this? From the Sea Tech, I'd never thought I'd put a Sea Tech game in here. Rocket Raider. It's a scramble clone. Uh, here we go. <laughs> you had Harrier attack. If it's not a scramble clone, it's a defender clone. You can't fly both ways, and it's not forced. <laughs> okay. Yay. We couldn't have done this list without including Jumping Jack, could we? Very simple looking graphics, very addictive game. And you get poetry between the levels. A game with poetry, who'd have thought, on the spectrum. Yeah. This, this is another definite one more core game. Um, and that's it. So we now have to come up with our on. top ten. So we need, out of all those, we need to pick our top ten. Come so, on then, let's go. Have you got your script? Number 10, Jumping Jack. I should have said Buster Rhymes, jump through holes. That's what it is. Uh, you're in at number... Number 9. nine. Um, the game that isn't Android 2, it's Android, Android 1. 1. Okay, the game with the incredibly large car comes in at number 8. Number 7, get a bit cross to bit every now and then. What? Thruster. Thruster. 
I felt that was eggs and omelette. Next, it's not a scrambled for Harry Ritter. <laughs> Next, another one of the 3D games on this list, it's 3D Tanks. 3D Tanks. And at number five we've got, yes, finally we've got in there, but a bit low. At uh, number three, yeah, it's a better game than Psst, honest. And at number two, 3D Death Chase, we knew that. And def we... Definitely not a speed of bike based game. And we all know what number one is, Jetpack. Anybody disagree? Uh, everyone disagrees with any top ten they ever see. Yeah, you're true. Okay, we're going to go on to some weird and wonderful software now. Um, I don't know whether you've heard of this before. It's called Auto Amuse. We're going to load it up on here. You might not be able to see it, which is a bit tricky. And it's a piece of software that randomly generates phrases based on words and other phrases. Sometimes quite profound, sometimes totally stupid. And we're going to put this on, we're going to read through a few and then we're going to go to the competition results and then we'll drop into the Q&A. So if anybody's got any questions they want to ask at I some see point. the endeavour. What? Oh, you're reading them already? Go. Cool. Obliterate the hero. Nobody can see that though, can we? Well, I'm just reading them out. Okay, go then. You do that one. I can't read that. I'm too old, I haven't got glasses. You can do that one then. I see billion people. Oh, so do I. <laughs> I see bi billion people. I've, I've, the fonts are terrible. The exploration each, the plenteous heaven vitalized. Empty lake in any of the river. I see important odour. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, let's get on to the competition. Yeah. So hopefully... Have you got any winners? Have we, I don't know, I've not checked. <laughs> do you want to... You, uh, you, you tell them what the answers are. And the answers are, of course, a cassette player, a micro drive, the plus two cassette player, and the plus three disc drive. And as I said to Paul, everyone's just going to get the start of the show up on their phones and write them down. So, who was first, Paul? The winner is Mr. G, 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 Mr. G Neil. How did you know? I'm feeling even worse for whoever came second now. There you go. You pick one. Pick well, one, pick one. We said it would be the first to come in. Yeah, if so they're right, if it's right. Is it right? I tell you what, right, so we're going to do a Q&A in a second. Everyone start thinking of questions, but I'm I'm going to do one to start off. Okay. okay. Paul, what are you going to do when you run out of, uh, it is right by the way, what are you going to do when you run out of hardware to review on the Spectrum Show? I will retire. <laughs> Does anyone want that? <laughs> well, give me hardware then. I, I have enough hardware and enough material for another 20 shows. And more hardware is coming in monthly, so who knows? I was going to stop at episode 100 because it was episode 100 and I'd had enough. And then I thought, I know, let's stop at episode 128. That's very apt. But no, I've got more hardware, sadly. So the, the winner. The winner is Alan Bellew. Ah. Well done, Alan. Alan. So we need some microphones for a Q&A. I'm going to bring you these and come into the audience yes. so I can... So if anybody wants to ask me or Jeff any questions, put their hand up and Jeff will attempt. Ask uh, someone in the back. Matt. I've got a question. question for you, Jeff. Is this the longest you've ever been without talking about Laws of Midnight? <laughs> yes, good question. Oh, um, it may very well be, although I was talking about Laws of Midnight just before I came in here. And you just bought one. What did you buy? Oh, yeah, no. This morning I bought a box of Team Stars Revenge to go next to my Lords of Midnight on my shelves at home. Right, more um, questions, otherwise Jeff has promised a walkthrough of Jet Set Willy 2. More questions. No more questions. Yeah, we've oh, got one, one here. One question, and then we can wrap up. I, I don't, who's timing it? Paul, why did you start doing the Spectrum show, and how have you... How can you have done it for so long? I'm just amazed. Uh, I started as a complete accident. I was asked at work if I would do a promotional video for an event. And to test out the software and how it all worked, I thought I'd do a small show called The Spectrum Show, which was going to be one episode just to see how I could do this stuff. I then put it out on YouTube and everybody said, when's the next one? 
Uh, at the same time, a friend was emptying his loft and gave me a Spectrum Plus, a wafer drive and some games, which is why the wafer drive is in episode two. And then it just sort of stuck and I just kept on going. And I don't know how. Right, so I think we're out of time. Thank you very much for coming to see us. Check out the YouTube channel. I Thank think you. we've got ages left. Well, we're finished. Nobody wants to ask us any more questions. See? And everyone's leaving, right? Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.